Hey Armin, nice to meet you again. Hey Peter, nice to meet you. I really have to tell you, I enjoy our weekly exchange. Yeah, it's fun. It's really interesting. Yes. You're, you're the first, except women, you're the first person I really miss. Oh. If I, if I don't see it, if I don't see you. Really? Oh yeah. Naughty, naughty, naughty boy. <laughs> For me, I only fix my eyebrows. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so mm -hmm. what's so what's, ah, what's it's interesting because we come from different positions in archery, and then it's always sometimes we clash, sometimes we agree, but it's really interesting. And even for me, it helps me get things back from my memory, which are buried somewhere, and you normally don't touch it. But through this discussion, you sometimes, ah, oh, this happened to me, whatever, 20 years ago, and then you, you get there again. It's interesting. You're wrong. You're wrong. You are from a different position in archery. I'm it depends from, from the, where you... It is, I'm, from a, the, I'm at the right place and right position. Depends on the viewpoint, you know. When I stand just on in Istanbul on the other side of the bridge, then I'm in the right viewpoint. <laughs> if you say Istanbul, my 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 imagination imagination starts starts mm -hmm. rolling. Mm -hmm. So I love. I think I never were there in Istanbul, but yeah, I was only at the airport once. But exactly. I really need to visit it once. Yeah. Yes, yes, I have to. Mm. I have I have to too. Mm -hmm. Me me too yeah. too too. Me, me too, too, too. Yeah, and then we're already four. It's too much. It's a, four yeah, my twos. Is bad. Yeah. How was your week? Everything fine? Everything fine, uh, except <laughs> we talked about in the past, everything is crazy. Oh, but, yeah. And it's getting if worse. If you're a kind of uh, uh, lonely guru, it's okay. So mm -hmm. you stay in your home and you yeah. don't see somebody, anybody, mm -hmm. and you're making thoughts of your own and so mm. it's okay it's okay yeah it's, it's, the craziness continues when it gets worse but like in 2020 everybody said oh let's finish 2020 and then for a new 2021 i said guys don't look forward 2021 will be even worse that was just not the yeah. beginning yeah. but no yeah. how can you it will be done and it will be over by then where are we now one year wearing this, this, but we don't go today. There is such <laughs> issue. Yes. And, and uh, they even ordered uh, the, the states, you know, Germany, mm. Austria, and European yeah. states ordered the vaccines of course. up to 2023. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they said know. already most probably every twice or even three times, maybe four times a year, you need your vaccine. Yes. yes. And when a new virus comes, it doesn't help anyway, but hey. Yes. And they don't know if it, if it protects, if it protects you, they don't mm. know. Mm. And they don't know if it protects you, if it protects you for three months or six months or. They don't know anything. I only know if you have the vaccine, you still need to wear your mask. You still need to do social distancing and whatever. But we will all get yeah, a vaccine yeah. ID or a vaccine pass or whatever. And then we have this two class uh, society, the vaccine yeah. ones, they can still go into the shop, into the supermarket, into the gym, into the swimming facility. Yeah. And the ones yeah. without, they can't. That is what we have yeah. to deal with. Yeah, yeah. So, so you're in big trouble because you can't you can't go to the Turkish bath and to where the, all the all the I, girls are. I think I think in in Istanbul and Turkey they see it differently and they let us in because it's you know it's, it's, I think they have no problem. I think there are more yeah. people with a bit brain left than. Yeah, I hope so. I, I think so too. I think so too. Yeah, I mean they have they have a history in fighting battles, you know, and they know how to. So it's, it's I don't know. Yeah, Germany you know what? Mm. I'm I'm very excited uh, for for the next podcast because we yes. will have Petra Engländer. Engländer, yes, our first guest. Engländer. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm very excited yeah. and I'm very uh, curious about what she she's gonna telling us exactly. 
First of all, it's about Boel Air, but she does uh, natural horseback archery, how she calls it, I think. And she even does horse Aikido, so which is very interesting, this Japanese soft and also martial art. She does, she does dancing or belly dancing or something like this. Yeah, hey, you know, you, when you know your body, it's always a good thing, I guess. So we will see. Yes. I'm really looking forward. And Petra is excited too, that she, oh, will, be, yeah. she will join in the next podcast. And then, so, and now we it start sounds... with, yes. Talk. Yeah, sounds sounds great. So it sounds awesome. We're getting better and better in this. Huh? <laughs> Practice I makes perfect. So. I hope so. Today we talk about books. Yes, the major topic, or I think the only topic, or the 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 the, the topic which holds everything together is books about archery. And then it's about what which books did you read, which books do you recommend, or what yeah. is your takeaway of an individual book? Because sometimes it's only one page in or one line in a book and it's worth it to have it. And other books are completely interesting from the beginning to the end. So that's why it's interesting to see that you show some books which were interesting for you. And I have some books, they were interesting for me. And then we simply talk. Um, I have to say one thing about this uh, subject. Uh, I'm a kind of... I don't know, perfectionist or mm -hmm. how you call it. And uh, uh, for some time, I was really interested in boxing. Mm -hmm. So I collected books about boxing okay. or hunting or something. Mm -hmm. and, and when I started the archery in 1990, for me, it was very natural because I love books. I had to, to start to get every book mm -hmm. available okay. about archery mm -hmm. and as you know back then in these days there were there were three to four yeah. archery Max. books in german language yeah, yeah yeah and most were on on olympic archery mm -hmm. or or the classic eugen herigl yeah, okay. in the archery saying in the art of the archery, art of archery yeah. and 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 they were also from this very nice, I'm sure you remember Robin Sport mm -hmm. shop. They had a very nice catalog mm -hmm. and, and, and they published Hunting with the Bow and Arrow in German language. Okay. From Sex, Sexton Pope's. Okay, yeah, I never about. read that one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's highly recommended. It's a so, really great book. But you still because... talk to me even if I didn't read it yet. That's very that's very generous. Yes, yes, yes thank because you. Because we have a we have a professional connection, so mm -hmm. I look over it. But mm -hmm. uh, thank you so much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> so uh, so I know you're not the guy who, who is a lot into books. So let, nah. so show show me one of you. Yeah, books. long long time ago, it was a long time back in Germany. I got then one. I went to a big bookshop and I found one about traditional archery. It was interesting but it was not really something new for me because i already did it so but it was at least the proof that i do something right but of course my books now are not about the western kind of archery it's more like you know my way of archery i have as example yeah. a really really interesting book and look at this is a really thick one and when you look how small it's written there's a lot yeah. to read and it's about the persian and it's Persian archery and swordsmanship, historical martial arts, and in Iran. This is really, really interesting. This is a very good source for everybody who is interested in this Asiatic way of martial arts, archery, sword fighting. It's, it, that's really quite expensive, but it's worth it. I have to confess, I don't have this one. No, I have really okay. not, but I don't have this one. It's okay. It's I, I will still talk to you. Don't worry. And, and what what uh, what uh, enlightenment you got out of this book? Uh, tell me one thing. I one can't thing. tell. I didn't read it fully. I only read the archery section, and then it's of course interesting to see how they describe you now the thumb release and what how they trained for it. That they had these big bows with weights on it that they build up the muscles to draw heavier poundages and stuff like this so that was interesting but it's simply when you're really into it to make it specifically like they did in this time then it's interesting for me it's simply good to know but it's not my way of shooting not exactly my uh, way of shooting and is it a transcribed transcript transcribed old book or is oh. it a new 
book. Uh, it's a new book. It's from Dr. Uh, Manu Sher. Uh, we need microphone assistant. This is too oh, small. Yeah. Manu Sher Moshtak Korazani. I think he li even lives in Frankfurt in Germany. And he really, and when you see these photos are all new. And this is here. Yeah. He studied all the old things and then he simply recreated it and and figured out how okay. it worked and whatever okay. so it's really a proven thing not simply okay this is something lost and then he simply shows everything application and techniques yeah. and whatever with with the shield but and it's it's really interesting good. but i said good. i didn't come fighting with a knife you know and it's it's really really interesting and so, and and uh he relates to all the sources Yes, yes, to old, to old Persian sources of archery. I understand. I didn't mark it now, but pretty really, you, you simply believe me that now. And then he shows even nice all this old weaponry and stuff like this. So it's really a very comprehensive. So if you're interested in this Asiatic way of archery, this is really a very good source. Yeah, that sounds great. This looks mm, like a good, really good book. Yeah, yeah. Oh, heavy. Nothing for to read in the bed, you know, because it's quite book. heavy. Mm. So now you. Uh, as I mentioned before, uh, one of the, or maybe the first book who really got me into archery and also bow hunting was, mm -hmm. uh, this is an, an old edition. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's okay. Uh, it's hunting, hunting, hunting with the bow and arrow. Okay by Sexton Pope, and it was back then, mm -hmm. I think in the 1980s, by F Bear Archery, by Fred mm -hmm. Bear. Okay. And uh, the, the original book uh, was published in 1923. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are a lot of good stories inside. The mm -hmm. best friend of Sexton Pope was Arthur Young, mm -hmm. who was a, an exception, exceptional archer. Yeah. who made expeditions in uh, in the North Pole area. He mm -hmm. hunted virus. Mm -hmm. They hunted grizzly bear and black bear together. Mm -hmm. uh, they were kind of hooked by the English longbow. Mm -hmm. They, they, they uh, went into a lot of museums and shows and also tested old Tata bows, old mm -hmm. Indian, uh, uh, mm -hmm. Native American Mm -hmm. Indian bows yeah. and so on. Mm -hmm. And as I like to show you, there are a lot of nice illustrations in mm -hmm. there, mm -hmm. an English longbow man, yeah. or, or how you, it's out of glue, this book, but mm. how you make feathers, mm -hmm. nice. how you make arrow points and, and mm -hmm. stuff. So, and, and that was that was your inspiration then or you yes after i read first. this i started with a compound bow switch mm -hmm. to a fred bear recurve bow a kodiak mm -hmm. recurve bow mm -hmm. and after i read this i had to have a long bow yeah, of course mm -hmm. so don't let quite... me read it otherwise i need to have a long bow too yes yes <laughs> be prepared yeah okay and uh, okay uh, do you have another one 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 sentence which was remarkable for you that you remember for all the times in this book? Uh, it's a, I don't know. Mm. There it's, are a lot of it, it's written very romantic and, and, mm. and you feel the, the spirit of the longbow archers and, okay. and uh, a big chapter inside is uh, about Ishi you know, mm -hmm. this last yeah, of his yeah, yeah. tribe, mm -hmm. and he was friends with uh, with Dr. Pope. Mm -hmm. Dr. Pope was a medical professor on the Berkeley University in California. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when they found Ishi, they brought him to the university, and he was a kind of, of, of living uh, mm -hmm. object of study. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they were also friends. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's a lot about Indian art as a Native Indian, mm -hmm. uh, Native American Indian archery, mm -hmm. and so on. I understand. And so I, I don't need, know yet now any spe mm. special sentence, but that's fine. It's highly recommended. I think it's okay. still available. Mm -hmm. It's a great book. Great book. Mm -hmm. 
and and you know back then mm -hmm. they they traveled to the Yellowstone and said okay we have to hunt grizzly bear now with our long bows mm -hmm. and one story beside of it is uh, I think in 1926 or so Dr. Pope and Arthur Young and Stuart Edward White who mm -hmm. was a rifle hunter went by ship to Africa because Dr. Pope has seen an Assyrian you know Assyrian Syrian uh, relief mm -hmm. where they hunted uh, lions with the bow and arrow mm -hmm. and he said we have to do this mm -hmm. and and by a steam you know a steamship mm -hmm. a big ship mm -hmm. they drove everyone on the journey made himself 1000 arrows mm -hmm. and wow. then they went mm -hmm. to Kenya if mm -hmm. I remember right mm -hmm. and hunted lions there with English longbows and mm -hmm. broadhead arrows and so on so this were kind of crazy folks too mm -hmm. there Especially are a lot of don't. interesting stories because mm -hmm. the lions judged them and then they they said uh, they said oh, we will die if we <laughs> do this oh, if you're going on to do this mm -hmm. and then they had an old ford t you know this first mm -hmm. pickup yeah. mm -hmm. trucks yeah. and shot from the car mm -hmm. At the lions, mm -hmm. and the lion charged the cars, and they had a puppet, a dummy mm -hmm. puppet. They threw out mm -hmm. from the back of the car, so the lion will mm -hmm. smash the puppet and don't mm -hmm. charge the car again. It's mm -hmm. a very crazy stories, yeah. wonderful stories. Mm -hmm. Crazy, yeah. These were real, real men. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they, and yeah. if you okay. if you search in YouTube for for Arthur Young. Mm -hmm. Arthur Young did a, an old movie in the 1920s. Uh, the movie was called, I think, Ales Alaskan Adventures. Mm -hmm. And you see Arthur Young with his kind of cowboy hat and mm -hmm. French Indian suit mm -hmm. crouching behind a brush, a bush. Mm -hmm. And there along are coming three grizzly bears. Mm -hmm. And he just stands up and shots the first grizzly bear into the chest. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you wouldn't do it. You mm. wouldn't do it. Hmm. No, no mm. idea you ever would do it. But hmm. they were this kind of men. Mm -hmm. Crazy. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It's like it is. So okay. We'll Good. My next book is interesting. This one is in German language. It's from a German guy, Hendrik Wiethase. And it's his own Wiethase Verlag. It's Danur Vidya. And this is about yeah. the old Indian yeah. way yeah. of archery, which is really yeah. interesting. And I think in the last podcast I mentioned already, when we were talking about different kinds of draws, when you see they have all kinds of draws, they do pinch yeah. grip, they do three finger, yeah. they do thumb release, whatever works right. for the situation they are up to. So they simply change. They don't say this is only one way to shoot or you only have the arrow on the left side. They shoot air on the right side, air on the left side, different pinch grip techniques, whatever. But I works don't agree. For I the don't situation. agree. Why? Why? Um, I'm sure you have. It doesn't depends which method, but you have to train one met method extensively to get really good at it. If you say you change the grip in any mm -hmm. situation, I can't mm. believe I should can get three. I shoot three different rows. I shoot three finger, I shoot thumb, and I shoot Slavic. And I'm in all three good. So no matter what situation would be and whatever, I would succeed in all three different ways. And even I last just... time I, I tried pinch draw, you know, this from the Native Americans, yeah. the Terry Terry or what you call it, where you simply... Uh, uh, help with the oh, yeah. middle finger and the index finger a yeah. little to yeah. pull a stronger yeah. bow. Even this one, I'm very good in it. I never practiced it. So, so you're kind of genius because I only shot three fingers and I'm I'm bad at it. Right. <laughs> it's all a matter of practice. You still have time. Yeah. You have yeah. nothing yeah. to do. Yeah. Yeah. Go yeah. out and yeah. shoot. Yeah. And it's so, I mean uh, it's different when you when you see that they did not only hunt 
you know, when you go hunting or when, when you bring the example, okay, when I go hunting, I do this, okay, I would do maybe the same, but they went hunting for birds as example, and then they had pellet bows, where there's a small yep. pouch, and then they have these clay pellets, and then they shoot pellets, if you would shoot this, you, first of all, you could not shoot three fingers, so you need yep. to have a pinch draw, and then you need to bring this hand out of the way, otherwise, you shoot the pellet directly in your hand, yep. so that's yep. why different ways of bows and hunting and whatever, require maybe different kinds of techniques i think uh, show, uh, show me again this cover from this book so now now i know where you got your mini skirt ideas from. no no not really <laughs> what what i what i found very interesting in this book is when in these old times when they started training an archer they first checked what is your strong hand i'm a right-handed guy Then they trained him first left-handed until he could do it perfectly. Yeah. Then he swapped to yeah. the right hand and could do it directly, perfectly with the right hand. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, when yeah. you start with a strong hand, right hand, you think, oh, I start shooting the left hand, then it has a learning curve. And they yeah. didn't have this yeah. because they yeah. simply shot them directly, both handedly in all possible directions. Then they were very successful. So yeah. when I you like start with, with yeah. I think I have one from this Vitase. Mm -hmm. Uh, about African archery, if I remember. Mm -hmm. well. Yeah, he did a few even about different Atta release Ipe. aids in ancient times. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. It's very, very well known. Okay. He, he knows a lot of stuff. So I show you another big no, book. Uh, show me yours and I show you mine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know <laughs> yeah, this one? I go ahead too. The, The Grey, Grey Goose, Goose Wing. Wing. Okay. Uh, by E.G. Heath. Is and this is about? a real classic... They're wonderful. Just a moment. I don't know. Wonderful illustrations and, and stuff inside. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's a big book. And mm -hmm. it's, I think it's nice. today, it's also a very rare book. Okay. Uh, I can't say too much about it. Uh, it's, uh, it, the subtitle is, The history of archery. So it's from mm. the very beginnings of okay. archery, mm -hmm. from native archery, and so on. It's a very big and nice book. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and nice. it it tries to. It's a kind of overview. Mm -hmm. So you can't learn a lot about mm -hmm. special archery, but. You, you learn about a lot about history and different mm -hmm. uh, actually in different continents and different mm -hmm. areas and so okay it's a great book it's a great big book big book okay then i continue with a small one you know i can't can't battle your big one now you know then i, I show you my small one, one. I have you showed me a big books. one i'll show you my small one okay it's another one from hendrik Wiethase. this is aus der stille pfeile out of the silence arrows yeah and this is more there there are no pictures in it simply written what he did when he teaches someone and what he does when he shoots and he said sometimes he only shoots one arrow in a month and it's simply his kind of focus training because when you have a quiver full of arrows and you normal practice shoot on your you yeah. know i have another i have another arrow i have another arrow yeah. i shoot better yeah. i have another one i have another one that's why we have the range. we're talking yeah. about it we shoot maximum three arrows And he sometimes only shot one arrow in one month. Then imagine how you look forward to this one arrow and you do really everything fully aware. Shoot this one arrow and then you leave it again. It's a nice idea. So it's an interesting book, It's more, but it's more a bit more this spiritual stuff. So it's not for you. Yeah, I know. I, I, I really uh, admire Vitas's work in many areas. But on the other hand, I'm not the, the biggest fan of his spiritual approach. Yeah, no, but, but it's hard he to... did a lot of research, as mm -hmm. we said, about yep. Indian and, and African archery. So, so mm -hmm. no, no bad comment about it. Yeah. But you can't, okay. you can't cut out the spiritual part, I guess. It's a whole thing, body, mind, soul. It's always this triangle. When you do something, yeah. you always do it with all yeah. three parts. At least you should do it, in my opinion. Yes, but as we talked in the past, you can't avoid it. So mm -hmm. uh, you can talk about it, but mm. 
it, it's, it's no difference if you are shotgunner, mm. shotgun shooter, trap shooter, pistol mm -hmm. shooter, mm. knife thrower, mm -hmm. archer, mm. dancer. Mm -hmm. It's always the same. It's yeah. all the same. You have to be into that thing mm -hmm. with your mm -hmm. whole mind. Otherwise, you can't you can't bring out a good result. The best in you, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. You? I oh. showed you a small one. Now you move. <laughs> uh, one of my second first books mm -hmm. was, uh, here's the, the date inside. In 1993, I bought this one. It's a very nice book. It is traditional Boas of America okay. by Dan Bert Allen. Mm -hmm. And every chapter is one custom bow maker. Oh, Not wow. only custom bow maker, it's, mm -hmm. it's, let me look about the chapters. It's uh, Fedora's archery, Fred Bay archery, Brickham mm -hmm. bow hunting, Assenheimer bows, Great Northern, Rota, Elberg. So, you have Pearson, Ben Pearson Archery, mm -hmm. Howard Hill Archery, Scorpion Longbow. So all the great, as you mm -hmm. like to call them, bowyers back mm -hmm. from the 1990s, yeah. some are still existing today. Mm -hmm. There's a chapter of one of every of them mm -hmm. and, and which bows they produce and, nice. and, and what mm -hmm. they talk about archery and bow hunting and so you know, I'm a lot in the American way, mm -hmm. and and you know, the 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 our days bow hunting mm. uh, was founded by Sexton Pope and Arthur Young mm -hmm. and Fred Bear and Ben Pearson and mm -hmm. Howard Hill, because bow hunting was forgotten. Mm -hmm. So they they reinvented it. They re uh, uh, reinvented this mm -hmm. as a kind of sports hunting because, mm -hmm. of course, everybody was hunt, would hunt with a rifle, of course. Yeah, of course yeah. And they said, no, we like to have more challenge. We yeah. have, we like to, to put this old weapon. The, let's let's say the field. forgotten way of hunting. Huh? <laughs> yeah. He doesn't yeah. like it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Now you like it. When Lars Anderson brings something and reinvents something, you don't like it. Huh? No, no, no. It as long as it's from forgotten. America, it's good. Huh? Mm -hmm. Because in 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 the Amazonas area, mm -hmm. in Papua New Guinea, and somewhere mm -hmm. there are still hunting uh, communities, hunting mm -hmm. tribes. So, also in Africa. So, bow hunting is not forgotten, but in mm -hmm. the Western world, it was forgotten. Mm -hmm. yeah. And same. Last it's interesting. The same, yeah. It's interesting. Uh, in Northern America, the Indians used to hunt with the bow and arrow, of course, mm -hmm. the native mm -hmm. Indians. Yeah. Uh, but the the tradition of bow hunting mm -hmm. don't uh, did not uh, grew out of this Indian bow hunting mm -hmm. of the Indian tribes, mm -hmm. but from Sexton Probe from the mm -hmm. Western. Interesting enough. Mm -hmm. Okay. So who, who they, said so? I have I my, say my, so my slightly true. doubts. I think the Indian culture is a little older than you. Long before yes, yeah, 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 yeah. But but no, uh, but no uh, settler mm. in the in Montana or somewhere mm -hmm. would would have the idea to hunt with the bow and arrow like the yeah, Indians did because mm -hmm. they had rifles yeah, and so. They refounded, they reinvented it. Okay. Don't reinvented it, but they made it popular. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. That's, Accepted. That's interesting. Yep. Okay, good. So me again? Of course. Me, 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 me. Okay, let's start with the I one book which I really would recommend if you're into Asiatic archery. Or you're interested. It's Chinese archery by Stephen Selby. I don't have it here anymore. I think I left it in Germany or somewhere. That's a really interesting book because he writes a lot about what he found or almost everything he found in all over China about archery and even crossbows. And when what so he really yep. covers the whole spectrum. There are then different ways how to shoot, different schools, different teachers. 
the one said you need to do this and the other one said no, if you do this you're stupid so you know like yeah. a lot that is really really interesting and this was for me once when i saw stephen selby's video when he shot a, a chinese um, like like a manchu bow and with thumb release and then the next thing was i had to order this book and i read it for sure five times i usually but, i read a book once and it's fine but this one i really read five times because it's really interesting but, but one of your girlfriend took it away i guess no I'm, i'm moving a lot and sometimes i simply leave a big box full of stuff there and said listen when i come back uh, I, but i never come back <laughs> it's, it's we, we move forward we don't go backwards mm. and you know because you mentioned chinese archery mm -hmm. china is a, re a big 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 country so mm -hmm. even in china as you say they are very mm. different forms of archery of course, of course because yeah. they from the mongolians to the han mm. chinese mm -hmm. there are a lot of different yep. ways of shooting i guess mm -hmm. yes and directly to to connect now there's a book from a friend of mine i don't have the real book i got it before to cross read it yeah. and make a make a how do you call it a foreword or something yep. on, on the back page introduce me to do yeah. it it's from scott m rodell he is a really well-known sword fighter chinese sword fighting he does yep. tai chi and he does chinese archery and he translated uh, a manual about the traditional manchu archery of the qing imperial guards so this is a little different than the others two but it's very well written with training and with with pictures of, of these archers and what they did and what not. So this is a really a gem if somebody's interested in these different kinds of shooting with drawings of how to hold the bow, how to hold the string and stuff like this. Really oh, good I advice. only don't have the yeah. real book because I he never sent me one, but I think he has it as a PDF or e-reader or something, but I got it before mm -hmm, to read mm -hmm. it. So, But that's mm -hmm. really interesting to read. So. looks good looks good that's it's really and he's uh, you see what the thing is the thing is scott rodell i said he's a sword fighter he's a martial artist so he has this approach from a martial art and archer is a martial art there was always a martial art too you kill something or yeah. someone with it so and he got this when he translates then something from Chinese, then he has at least the understanding from the viewpoint of a martial artist. If you give a Chinese text of archery to some translator who has no idea of body physics and whatever, you might get a different result. But he really yep. knows what he's doing, and that's why this book is really good. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. So now you. Looks great. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'd like to have it. Mm -hmm. Let me look. Let me look. Uh, yeah. Maybe it's not a special archery book, but um, I have an English edition, but it don't looks very good because it's, uh, mm. you know, you can write. The, Peter, you, you should can know me by the, now. I but, don't judge a book by its cover. I see. I see. I see. As long as it is just 17 years old, okay. <laughs> you like it. <laughs> just a joke. No, but I have a German edition here. You can 18, see more. 18, 17 is this, illegal. You should know me better, Peter. Ah, yeah, I see. I see. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Uh, this book is by Sasha Siemel, Alexander Siemel, mm -hmm. who was from Latvia, or how you call it? Latvia. Yeah. Latvia. Mm -hmm. Latvia, yes. Mm -hmm. And as you see on the cover, he used to, the book is called, in German, it's the White, the Weiße. Tigrero, in English it's Tigrero, mm -hmm. and uh, he went to Brazil and he heard about an old Indian who used to hunt it jaguars with a spear. Mm -hmm. okay. the, the term for the spear was Sagaya. Mm -hmm. As you see in the picture, it was a really big spear mm -hmm. with a big blade, you see. Yeah. Wow. And uh, he also was a, hunt, a bow hunter and mm -hmm. an archer. And uh, uh, I think he fought, and there's one little clip, one short clip on YouTube. If you if you type in Sasha's email, mm -hmm. where you can see how he fights a charging jaguar wow. with the spear. Okay. You know, I got 
how you call it goose skin when I see it because you know a jaguar is a different animal than a than a <laughs> leopard. It's mm -hmm. not 80 kilograms, it's about 150. Mm -hmm. It's a really big cat. Mm -hmm. And if I if I ever if you ever met, I like to give you this book to read because mm -hmm. he was a guy mm -hmm. and his his daughter mm -hmm. Alexandra Siemer. He, his name was Alexander Sasha, and her name, she was born in Brazil where he used to live. Mm -hmm. And we are friends on Facebook. Mm -hmm. So she's on Facebook, her daughter is okay. on Facebook. And when I wrote my Legends in Archery, there's one chapter inside about Sasha Simmel, and he was friends with Arthur Young mm -hmm. and, and with a lot of the old archery greats. Mm -hmm. And when, when he left uh, Brazil, he used to live in Pennsylvania and in the United States. Okay. And, and his granddaughter lives in London. And so I was invited once to London to mm -hmm. his granddaughter. So a crazy guy, mm -hmm. a crazy guy. Mm -hmm. You can't imagine. Mm -hmm. you can, a, a yeah. real man's man. Mm -hmm. I understand. Good. Yes. Next book. have another one. I almost didn't want to talk about this one anymore. It's The Way of Archery by Justin Ma. He's a Chinese guy and Ji Tian. I always Ji Tian most probably. And they, there is in this book, Chinese Archery, I told you there is one. Great book. I have it too. Great book. There's one part in it of this Gao Ying method, of this general Gao Ying. And they simply transcribed or, or translated it in their knowledge, in their way. Yep. And they show everything there from the training and whatever is all necessary. Wonderful book. I really love it's, it. It's it's a very good book. It's, it's and expensive. The Gao, <laughs> yeah, a good book can cost money. The Gao yeah. Yin way is a very good way. It's maybe not the best way, but it's a very good book. And they they all this thing is about this the bow shoulder but they don't talk that much about the draw shoulder, but it's still very good. But I said, it's, it's a good book. Uh, but, as, but as you say, there are a lot of books just talking about the drawing hand and the mm -hmm. drawing and release. So maybe it's not a bad idea to have a book which talks of the other yeah, side even, of the... <laughs> I think even Gao Yin should or saw it for sure as a holistic thing that you include your whole body then you can't yeah. emphasize only on one thing and forget all the other things more or less not that they forgot it but you know this yeah, yeah said it was... it's one way it's one good way chinese way to shoot a bow but there are others and i think it's not the best but that's me yep so as we talked before if you strictly train this method it's yeah. also a good way of course of course of course no of problem course. so do, I, do you have another one or the only one is the bible you have left no the, the, the. <laughs> uh, yes yes i have i have the bible left yes yes oh yeah that's a great book i have oh there's a there's a wrong see chinese ring daggers because we are loving blades yeah there's a book yeah. about the chinese yeah. ring daggers and how they how you should use them it's it's not very informative but because are i like they, the, they, the daggers. i like daggers with the ring on the back are this the same like this japanese kunais yes a little longer not so pronounced as simple yeah. as like daggers and they have this ring at the end that you can put it on the finger you can swirl it around you yeah. have more reach when you attack someone or you have even when you when you swing both then you have like a metal shield in front of you so it's really it's, it's very interesting yeah uh, you know, I'm a fan of all these martial arts. Yeah, yeah, I can yeah. tell you. I can tell you. I okay, so let me look. Yeah. yeah. You. Sorry. No, you, you first. You first. I have, okay. I have two more. Let me see. Let me see. Okay. Uh, this one is uh, by Stim Wilcox. Okay. And it's called The Art of Making self -Bows. It's a book especially made for, you know, these mm -hmm. wood covers and cell phone makers. Mm -hmm. Very nice book. Yep. Very, uh, you know, with pictures, how you, how you split the logs mm, and, okay. and how you do nice. everything very... and mm -hmm. how you carve the, the, the bow tip knobs mm -hmm. and so on. A very good book. 
I don't know if it's still available, but it's a great book. Mm -hmm. I, love I, I think they read. always will have a revival because these books are nowadays more, uh, or they are more interested people now than they were 20, 30, 40 years ago. So I think they are quite, yeah, yeah, quite, yeah. quite actually quite interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Me again. Yeah. I have one I need to read now, not that I pronounce his name wrong, because I don't, of course, have not American books here. It's from <laughs> Adam Svoboda, and it's The Art of Shooting a Short Reflexed Bow, which okay. is a very, very interesting one. So he did a lot of study and a lot of experimenting for himself. So there you see him, he stands there and shoots. Yeah. Very good. And he shows, of course, thumb release. What else could you expect? and yeah. with a thumb ring and stuff like this it's very interesting but so here you see him standing but of course he said so once you decide that you start shooting thumb release don't change and only shoot thumb release and this is then for me again a little too limiting because i like to have my options open and i like to be maybe not the the best with thumb release, but I want to be very good in all different ways of things. So for me, it's more a combination, but it's, yes. it's really, really worth reading. But so if you're into thumb archery and thumb release, this book is really interesting. Adam looks Scobo. good. Looks good. But I mean, I have to, I have to uh, say something about it. Mm -hmm. You know, you're a special guy. You're totally into, mar into martial arts. You, you're trying this and that and making a lot of uh, uh, entertaining and, and how-to videos. So yeah. it's a very, I think that he's also right if he says, if you do this, do just this. Because if you really want to become good for a usual person, not a guru like you, who is I'm able to do anything, it's a joke. Mm. But uh, it's not wrong what he says. Of course not. I, think. I, I didn't say that it's wrong. It's simply for me to limiting. Yeah. Because what, what happens, yeah. just in case, I'm, we are now in a, in, in a, we can get back in a time where you need to shoot your bow and arrow, let's say, because they take all, all rifles away. Like in America, they take now yeah. all the guns away. You can keep your bow and arrow. So, and I'm no thumb shooter. And then for whatever reason, I hurt my thumb. Yeah. So, but I'm still yeah. on whatever, on a raid or whatever. I still need to kill a yeah. few and I can't use my yeah. thumb. So what shall I do? If I would know yeah. how to shoot three fingers or whatever Slavic, yeah. I'm in a better position when I only can use my thumb and this thumb of is course. gone, I'm screwed. Of so course. then I can throw my bow away. So it's, you Same know. if you're a both hand shooter with a gun. Exactly. So you had this one hand, you can shoot with the other hand. Exactly. Of course, of course. So of that's course. why for me, it's that's why. But of course, if you... When you start archery, always I have a few here that try then this and this and this and they listen first shoot one style, stick with three fingers until everything is in your muscle memory. And that means at least 1000 proper shots. Yep. Repetition, repetition that you get it in your muscle memory. Once you get one thing right, then switching to another style or another technique. Is yep. easy yeah, because yep. you can adapt. Yep. Yep. your body knows how to adapt. Then. But yeah. when you don't even know exactly what you do with three fingers, and I know what to shoot now, but now I want to shoot Slavic, and I want to. Yep. It's not. It's counterproductive. It's, I'm sure you would agree. It's like we started. We we didn't know how to do it, and so we tried everything, mm -hmm. and and we couldn't get to a good result. Yeah. Until we found out. Okay, I do this way, and and then you get to result, and then you can okay. switch as you say. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Good yeah. idea. That's why. Good. You? Okay. Let, let me look. You have one more? Oh, I have a lot. <laughs> I didn't say that. I have here a book by Keith C. Shaila. Mm -hmm. It's called Archery from Gold to Big Game. So it's about target archery to oh, okay. hunting. Oh, okay. And, uh, Yeah, you see famous archers, how they draw, how they anchored, and, okay. and, and so on. And, mm -hmm. and uh, I don't know, it's a lot of stuff inside 
how you you build an archery range and mm -hmm. everything it's a kind of, of of standard work as you like to okay. call it with every aspect of archery inside very nice. mm -hmm. and a very sort of a very mm -hmm. rare book today mm -hmm. One question yep. for you, because we got one comment on the last one and somebody said, listen, oh, no, no sugar coating or whatever, but I am completely wrong about hunting. I don't know what I said, which offended him that much. And he said, you know, if we would not hunt now, whatever white tails or whatever, then we would have too many and then they would starve and whatever and stuff like this. So that he thinks um, that the human race needs to balance out nature and my my answer was simply maybe this happens only because the human was changing the natural environment of these animals if they could live still as they lived before and human takes uh, nature takes care of it we would not need to hunt them down because we would have too many of this or too many of that i mean we see everywhere monoculture and stuff like this of course it causes problems And this might yeah. maybe one problem yeah. because the human or men think they need to regulate these things and then they get the problems yeah. and then they justify, okay, now we need to kill more because yeah. we have too many. What's uh, your take on this? Uh, it's very simple for me. Uh, if you look into Europe or in, in dense populated mm -hmm. areas, mm. you have to hunt because there are no natural enemies of the deer. Mm -hmm. You can let them starve or let mm -hmm. them die by age, but mm -hmm. you know, no problem uh, that you wouldn't like it and you like to eat the meat and so on. Mm -hmm. But in, 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 uh, in natural habits, mm -hmm. in, in the Yellowstone or in, in Southern, you know, in Brazil, in mm -hmm. the Amazon or somewhere, mm -hmm. Of course, it regulates by its own. Mm -hmm. But as soon as the pop of the, the human population gets too dense to think, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. you have to do it. Okay. And there are also other interests. Mm -hmm. And you know, this is an interesting thing about Europe. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I dare to say, if in Germany or in Austria, where we are from, mm -hmm. Uh, if there would would be no hunters, mm -hmm. there would be no game, mm -hmm. because uh, the farmers don't like the game. Mm -hmm. They ruin their, you know, their 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 crop, their their, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. their, you know what I mean, mm -hmm. yeah. their harvest. Mm -hmm. The foresters don't like game, don't mm -hmm. like deer, because you know they they kill the trees mm -hmm. by by putting the bark off and, mm -hmm. and eating the young you know if you have a young tree they they, they feel mm -hmm. so it's only in dense populated mm -hmm. areas so it's Every... the human interest because yes, they, they okay. interfere with human interest or profit yes but but your idea or not your idea the, how mm -hmm. you said it because the humans started to intervene into nature. Mm -hmm. But the humans are part of the nature. Mm -hmm. So but why do, I mean, when you see other old cultures, like, like, like say the, the, the Aborigines, they don't interfere, they simply live with nature. They don't no, regulate they, nature. No, they interfered, of course. They, they live with it, but they are part of yes, it. Yes, we live with it too. Yeah, but we change it. They changed it too. Okay. Because, you know, in Northern America, mm. there were Indian tribes. Mm -hmm. They also, they, they, Anasazi, or how they called it, they, they devastated the land. It's not, mm. okay, they live by nature, but what else could they do? Mm. And we also live by nature. So yeah. I, I disagree to say the human is not part of the nature. No. And if the human is a factor, uh, a, 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 a force in the nature, mm -hmm. so it's 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 uh, legit. Mm -hmm. Why? To as long as you protect the animals, 
and say, okay, I like to hunt deer mm -hmm. also in thousand years. Mm -hmm. So I protect them and, and I, I look at the population. Everything from is from good. what? You just said that in our uh, dens, they don't have any, any predators, so they could live or, or have even more populate, yeah, population. But in these small areas where our forests are, in Germany mm -hmm. as in Austria, you have to have a kind of game management, deer mm -hmm. management. If you just let them populate and grow and grow and grow and grow. But, um, if, but on the other side, maybe if we let it, then maybe we get the wolves back and the bear back, you know, and, what and then is, they will what take is, care of what is, what is the advantage if you have the wolf and the bears back? That they can take care of each other and balance it out so they don't need a human. Yes, but... Uh, you won't go you won't let your your child go out into the woods if there are bears and wolves and so on You're and there's one anyway. i'm sure there's one good reason mm -hmm. uh, there are no wolves in our uh, uh, european countries which is because they're dangerous of course, of course. your cars are dangerous to get out of the street yeah yeah of so. course yeah 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 <laughs> But there's nothing wrong about to say, I protect the animals and I like every species to live on and I, I hunt why, some of them. Yeah, but why do, do we think we know how many or how much or where and when? Why, 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 since, since when is the human okay. being so much okay. more okay, I mean, than okay, I mean, by itself? Okay, I mean, but if you're if you're thinking your thought to the end, mm. you have to go back up into the tree. Mm -hmm. So don't come from human the... civilization involves this. Mm. But we still don't come from the monkey, so no, but how how we have a dense population, mm -hmm. a, a big population in yes. Europe, let's say. Okay. Yeah, and we Bill, have Bill Gates small of this now, don't worry. <laughs> yeah. And we have small forests mm -hmm. and areas. Yes. And if you like to but keep did, that... didn't we have bigger forests before we started cutting all the forests away? And then we tell, you know, we cut 90% of the forests away because we need it yeah. for whatever. And then we tell, oh, look, now we have too many deer because the, the forest is not big enough. So this is what I mean that the you're human right. But brain... if you, yes, mm -hmm. but there's only one other way. You yeah. can say, okay, we are high, we are highly dense populated, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it's in Europe, yeah. and, and 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 we need these fields and the mm -hmm. crop to feed our mm -hmm. people. Yeah. Or you can say, okay, we make no field, we mm -hmm. let it to the animals, but. That worked mm -hmm. back then, where the people were hunters and gatherers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but look at look at example to America, how much of 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 uh, corn they produce yep. and they really use, and how much they throw away because they don't know what to do with it. But they have these huge industrial yeah. farming. Yeah. For for yeah. What reason. Yeah. I don't say everything. What is happening today is good. Mm. But to say hunting is evil or I not didn't good. Say that. If, when I'm hungry and I eat meat and I shoot something and eat it, then it's fine. Okay. And do you really think that only one single hunted animal in Europe mm. is wasted? I don't know. Every part of this meat is uh, the, the people eat. Mm -hmm. I am a hunter myself. Uh, and you know what? I mean, mm. you go out into the woods mm -hmm. with rifle or bow, it doesn't mm -hmm. depend. And you're challenging the animal, mm -hmm. you stalk the animal, mm -hmm. and you kill it. Mm -hmm. And you, 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 you skin it. field skin it. Mm -hmm. And you put it at home. Mm -hmm. And you're roasting the fresh liver. Mm -hmm. And you sit with your hunting buddies. Mm -hmm. That's the point when I remember where I come from. Mm 
okay. why human civilization was able to to grow mm -hmm. okay. and 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 even in africa if they shoot an elephant mm -hmm. no grain of this meat from this elephant is wasted oh, because mm -hmm. it will get eaten mm -hmm. okay so, Nobody hunts just for yes. Even if you're the one who shot says, the lion, you don't eat lion, right? They eat lion. Yeah, okay. They eat lion. Mm -hmm. And another thing is, you can't, uh, you can't. Uh, uh, what's the problem with the lion? I don't know. Shooting no, for I, my problem is hunting as a sport. When you, you hunt because it's necessary that you have food on the table, or like we said once with Ted Nugent, he bought this big forest yeah. and he has his yeah. own white tails yeah. in, and then he goes in, he shoots one and he grills it, fine. But simply hunting for fun that I kill an animal just for the satisfaction of killing something. Nobody does it. Okay. Nobody does it. Too good. Even if you're a trophy hunter, you hunt the trophy animal, the meat will be used mm -hmm. you pay a lot of money mm -hmm. and in the good places in africa mm -hmm. where hunting isn't prohibited but mm -hmm. supported and cultivated mm -hmm. they shoot an elephant that guy pays uh, let's say eighty thousand dollars for shooting an old elephant cow mm -hmm. and this money gets back to the tribes mm -hmm. where they live and maybe you have you read it in my book about yes, Kenya yes, where yes. they prohibited hunting and that's true mm -hmm. that's true so the hunters keeping the wild animals alive that's mm -hmm. a fact okay good they protect okay. them good we'll a leave. nice a nice uh, subject <laughs> as yeah, you see. I see that you go up in this yes but we are not done yet with the books I was just because this no. came just in my mind so my Second last book I have is The Composite Bow. And it's a nice Mike one Lodes. by Mike Lodes. Hmm? Yeah, looks and great. And this is really, so from, from, from the beginning and from the different shapes of all these, you know, from the see, Assyrian yep. bows to how they made them with horns in your wood and what and not. It's really interesting. And then, of course, even when you string them the first time, you need these braces and stuff like this and how to shoot. So this is a really Very good book about all the materials they used and then how they shot the bows and stuff like this. Oh, yeah. But I can't help they shoot it again with thumbs. nice drawings. Yeah. Hmm? yeah. Nice drawings inside, as I see. Yeah, yeah. This is drawings, but of course, even the, the practical side, so they even do what they say. So it's not that they had yeah, some yeah. findings in old history books yeah. and didn't know what to do. They really show how it's done. So this is a very interesting book if somebody's interested yeah, in yeah, yeah, composite yeah, bows yeah. in general. This one by Mike Lodes. And it's not very thick, so it's a quick read, Looks but it's good. very informative. Looks good. Okay, oh, so next book. May I show you another yes. one? Okay. Of course. Let me have read a look. on. Uh, there I have from one great author, D. E. Donald Thomas Jr. Mm -hmm. uh, this one is called Longbow Country. Mm -hmm. It's about bow hunting. Great. He's a, a good writer. You know, mm -hmm. there are some some uh, um, some how-to books and so on, mm -hmm. and they are very informative, mm -hmm. but this one is also a really good writer, so okay. you would enjoy to read it. Okay. Because it's very good written. Mm, yeah, this is There's another say, one. This is what they say in writing. One, either the writer or the reader needs to put an effort in it. And it should be the writer. That the reader yeah. has the pleasure yeah. to read. Yeah. 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 Mm. yeah. Uh, that's by the same, by the same author. It's mm -hmm. called The Double Helix. Mm -hmm. It's bow hunting African planes game. It's okay. about bow hunting in Africa. Very good book. Same author. Mm -hmm. Long bow in long bows in the far north. Same mm -hmm. author. Very great hunting novels, uh, but true stories, but very well written. Okay. One of my other first books is by L. Henderson, a classic 
on target for understanding winning archery. Mm -hmm. It's it's a small book, mm -hmm. but it's a lot on the on the mental side, mm -hmm. how you how you behave in competition and, and a okay. lot also in Olympic archery. And so it's very, mm -hmm. a good book. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite book books by Fred Anderson mm -hmm. is the traditional way. Mm -hmm. And it's like my Legends in Archery book. Every chapter is about one interesting or famous archer. Mm -hmm. And you see how they shoot their shooting mm -hmm. form and, and uh, their equipment and, and so mm -hmm. on. You see, this is Frank Eichholz, mm -hmm. the guy who first put uh, fiberglass on bows. Mm -hmm. Does he shoot some release there? Huh? Yes, he. See? No. Oh. Uh, he invented a kind of release aid okay. back then. Mm -hmm. Before the days of the compound bow, he, he experimented with recurve bow and release. Like, mm -hmm. yes, he was also influenced. By, mm. by Eastern Archery. Mm -hmm. He was a, 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 a recurve bow guy. Mm -hmm. Let me see what we have. No. I have to say quickly something about this book again, because I, I wanted to mention it yep. and I forget it. The title is The Way of Archery. And yeah. this is what I think, you know, it's a little, it's one way of archery. I it may be a good way for archery, but it's not the only one. And when you, when you see this, the way of archery, you think, okay, forget everything else. This is the only one. It's not true. So that's uh, why titles sometimes could be a bit, bit misleading. Yeah, but you don't know. Maybe it was an original title of an old book. So maybe not this author title mm. is the way, but I don't <laughs> it's know. It's an interpretation. I mean, it's still a translation and this is their own thoughts put into it. And if this Gao Ying was so, so full of ego that he calls his own style the way of archery, okay, might be. Marketing, you know. Yeah, yeah, of course. The forgotten and the reinvented and uh, we had this. One other classic I have to show you. Mm -hmm. Most uh, know it. It's Winds of Change. Mm -hmm. by Jim Ham, a classic, uh, also about bow hunting, mm -hmm. about making strings and, and everything you can find in it, uh, arrows, bows, mm -hmm. everything, bows from the past to today, and mm -hmm. so on. A very good book by Jim Ham. Mm -hmm. I have one left. I oh, showed it already a little because we are talking about hunting. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, yeah. More, that's, it's no, it's that's a modern just... classic, I would say. You know, this is at least some modern literature which is about real archery because what you can read nowadays is like uh, the, the Hunger Games and, and whatever, yeah. all these fiction and historic stuff, novels yeah. and, and all this stuff. But this is at least really about hunting, about archery with a little thought into it about you know this this you know all, all what you put all thank in you it. and i just saw today your post that the new book is finished now yes i think i will uh, one more week mm -hmm. and then i can publish it very good. i'm able to publish it mm -hmm. i have to correct it and put yeah, it into course. the video you know what? A lot of work. yes as and as you mentioned it i tried to you know Archery isn't the biggest part of this book. No. But everything I talk about or write about archery, I think is true. Mm -hmm. And I think is, is uh, realistic mm -hmm. to do. Yep. And uh, yeah, so mm. I'm, kind, uh, I'm kind of proud because I, I wanted to make a book mm. not only for the archers, but for yeah. a broader yeah, uh, variety of readers, and yes. so and you, you and can you bring the only realistic focus archery on yeah. archery, yeah, yeah. yeah. and not yeah. the fancy archery where they supposed to shoot two hundred pound bows, like the green yeah. archer or the 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 other one. Yeah, the, that's uh, in the second part. Or the, the second or book. Okay, mm -hmm. you will love it because there are 
there are uh, there are uh, virgins who mm -hmm. are doing archery, a kind of you know a kind of monastery with. Why do you think I would do this? I thought so because because you are for the spiritual way of archery. Of yeah, then I need to tell you quickly, you know, that I was into tea ceremony, Chinese tea ceremony. I do this. Yeah, and I, like this I saw tea. the picture. And then once I heard the story of a very special tea. And you need to imagine now you're in the mountains in China and it's very foggy. And in the morning, you know, before the sun really goes up, only virgins go there on this tea plantage and they pick... Yeah. The, 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 the very thin, very fragile first leaves of this tea, but not with the fingers, with their mouth. Like, hmm. oh, and that they, sounds, and I thought that I sounds like an expensive tea. tea. <laughs> yes, it's very expensive. <laughs> and I, as I think it was when I was in Wudang, then this Wudang master told us this story. I forgot where I knew it from. And I told directly to my friend, this time we need to go there. The only thing which will happen is that there will be no virgin left, but at least we saw it. <laughs> Uh, that would be my that would be my, my next question. Uh, who controls if they are virgins? No, I would have so, checked it because we you know when, nice, that would be a nice job for you. When you do journalistic work, not like nowadays, what mainstream media does, they get paid to write a story. I yeah. would be a journalist and I would go to the bottom of this problem and we do my research properly, of course. Research in, in depth. In depth, yes, in, in very depth. Yes. <laughs> I understand. I, I, well, that's, uh, I see you don't have too crazy, you have nice ideas. Have nice at ideas. least I take, and because I take journalism, if I would do it very seriously, not like almost every mainstream, mainstream scribe, scribal, scribaling is doing it yeah. now. So, something else you have to tell us about the second book of your trilogy? No, yes. I hold the it second, up so people can write it down and then yeah, you really need yeah, to order yeah. it, guys. Uh, is there an good, English version coming? Question. Yeah, a good friend of mine is uh, at work to translate the first volume mm -hmm. to English. Mm -hmm. So I don't I know when it will appear. For the American people, English so. speaking people. I think so too. Yeah, yeah, very yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah the second yeah, one up yeah. out soon. So very well. Good. I'm done uh, with my book. I have a lot more. What you mentioned, of course, Eugen Herigel, Zen in the Art of Archery is interesting to read. And this book yeah. brought even a few people to the archery range that I read this book and then a lot of see how it is. So that's interesting. Of course, it's a Japanese way of shooting, so it's a little different, but it's fine. It, it, it yeah. sparkles interest. People, so it's fine. as you say and even if they are as they know today mm -hmm. uh, many things are wrong inside this book or not so true uh, it is a good book because you you get the feeling the spirit of exactly. archery you understand yep. it what they think yep. about saying in archery and so on mm -hmm. so Eugen Herigl, Herigl was uh, a lot discredited mm -hmm. after nowadays and so yeah. but it's still a, a great book about that yes, definitely so i have a lot more to show you if so, uh, do we have time yeah go quickly through it when when okay. you see me like look at me when you see me like this and i start drooling then i fell asleep then we should okay be okay as long okay. as i have my eyes open okay yeah, I'm okay checking. so there's one uh, one reprint of a re very famous archery book the book of archery mm -hmm. by uh george Agar Hansard. Mm -hmm. So even Sexton Pope uh, relates to Hansard, the Hansard wrote. And so okay. very great mm -hmm. book, very nice. great book. Uh, this one is by Paul C. Hogan, mm -hmm. and it's the Encyclopedia of Archery. Okay. Yeah. Or the great book everything is you know encyclopedia like a lexica mm. like yeah, a yeah. where you can find everything inside mm -hmm. it okay no. so i will go faster <laughs> mm -hmm. i didn't know that you have so many books <laughs> i think we can make another, uh -huh. another show bow and arrow okay. by g howard gillian mm -hmm. about Target archery, mm -hmm. bow hunting, mm -hmm. bow fishing, everything you can imagine. Mm -hmm. Red work. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, they are my, they are my, my darlings. Of course, a booklet, mm -hmm. Archery Adventures, oh, Adventures nice. with Howard Hill. Mm -hmm. Great pictures inside Howard mm -hmm. Hill on horseback and mm -hmm. uh, hunting uh, Jaguar with the bow and arrow. Mm -hmm. Also drawings, you see. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Yep. And this little thing costed mm -hmm. about $100. Mm -hmm. This is an English, a British edition of Howard Hill's Wild Adventure. Mm -hmm. Very nice book. Mm -hmm. You see on the past, it's a lot yeah. about, of course, about hunting mm -hmm. and African adventures and yeah, Vapiti, yeah. elk hunting and mm -hmm. so on. Great book. Yeah, I, think your book see, I think your book, These Legends in Archery, is very interesting too because you bring, I think, almost all of these ones in your book. Yeah. So if you don't want to spend the time to read individual books, get this book, Legends in yeah. Archery, then you get at least yeah. an open of all these famous archers yeah yeah mm -hmm. that was my idea because i always had the wish i always said to myself oh i wish there would be one book mm -hmm. out where i can find all these legends kind of uh, comprimated or how you call it and so on yeah, and then so when it doesn't exist one, you need to write it it's quite simple you need to do it yeah mm -hmm. so the if one is interested in how Till's style of archery and how it works is by bob wesley mm -hmm. It's traditional archery adventures, mm -hmm. how you shoot, how you hunt. Very good book okay. about hill archery. Mm -hmm. And then one of the best by John Schultz, mm -hmm. hitting him like Howard Hill, <laughs> the method, how it's called, Hill's Basics of Shooting and Hunting. Okay. You see here pictures inside, how mm -hmm. trick shooting and so yeah. on. Mm -hmm. One can see where you got your inspiration from. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And here's one by Hertha's Archery, who was a kind of uh, archery stuff producer, like bear archery, but not mm -hmm. so big, but like Browning, Bear, mm -hmm. Pearson, one of the big archery mm -hmm. companies. Yeah. It's professional and amateur archery tournament and hunting instructions and encyclopedia. Wow. Okay. A lot of stuff stuff inside mm -hmm. you see how you feel stress deer mm -hmm. how everything inside very mm -hmm. nice. nice how the meat is parted mm -hmm. and so on mm -hmm. so then we have here the wonderful book of craig ekin who is the today's owner of howard hill archery in montana howard mm -hmm. hill the man and the legend yeah nice book mm -hmm. about howard hill mm -hmm. Of course, he is Byron Ferguson's mm -hmm. Become the Arrow. This I read. By itself. This I read. It was an interesting read. Yes, yes. Yeah, I forgot. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've yeah. some books crossed my, but I don't have them anymore. So, yeah, but this was interesting. Yeah. Too. And, and you know, Byron Ferguson is a, how you call it, a non-nonsense guy. Yeah. He's, he's a bow hunter. So he's very pragmatic about everything. And, and as if you re read it, you know, yeah, he's, yeah, he's straightforward. Yeah, yeah. Jokes around. It's mm -hmm. like, like it is. Yeah. There's another. I saw edition. once uh, at Kennecus, there was, yeah. I saw a video when Byron Ferguson was with Henry Botnick at Bearpaw. Yeah. And I was there. Henry too. Botnick had his, his issues, I think with this, with the straightforwardness of Byron Ferguson. Yeah. He was completely, I think, a little, was a bit too much for him <laughs> to deal yeah. with this personality or to deal with this character. Yeah, yeah. Mm. No, you know, he, uh, Byron Ferguson, Ferguson is as cool as he appears. He mm -hmm. is really yeah. that cool guy. Mm -hmm. He had one nice joke. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they said, oh, uh, you can hit an aspirin in the air, you know, mm -hmm. an aspirin tablet, mm -hmm. and and how many tries you need to mm -hmm. hit it. And mm -hmm. I know it because I've seen it in person. Mm -hmm. From five throws, he hits mm -hmm. it three times. Mm -hmm. But his answer was to this guy, mm -hmm. you know, I would hit it every shot, but my woman needs some throws to get into. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> nice guy. Great mm -hmm. guy. Great yep. guy. Mm -hmm. And you know, he's a kind of 
like that that good American you love to mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. He invented me hunting. Come over to the Goodman Ranch to Tennessee. Let's mm -hmm. hunt. Mm -hmm. And I flew over and we hunted together and so on. Mm -hmm. and he said, such a cool guy. Mm -hmm. No question about it. Yeah, I hope that we get him soon here in the show. Yep. Yep. We work on that, guys. So be patient. Of course. Mm -hmm. Here's another edition of Howard Hill's Wild Adventure. Mm -hmm. You see, great thing. Let me see. Of course, here's Howard Hill's own Hunting the Hard Way mm -hmm. classic. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, there are pictures inside how you you know, see how you make mm -hmm. strings mm -hmm. and stuff and also very nice uh, let me see of his shooting style how he mm -hmm. anchors how mm -hmm. he does everything mm -hmm. and what is also nice is there are a lot of drawings nice drawings inside mm -hmm. yep not only photographs but mm -hmm. But, yeah, I, I get these yeah. books and only look at the photos and the drawings because I am too lazy to read. Yeah. <laughs> no problem. Uh, no problem. So what? Oh yes, one other big guy in kind of Howard Hill style was Bob Swinehart, mm -hmm. and this is a wonderful, wonderful book. Yeah. It's called Sagitt Sagittarius, mm -hmm. and there are a lot of big pictures inside from. Mm -hmm hunting in africa mm -hmm. and hunting uh shark and, mm -hmm. and everything yeah. and the hill style equipment you see the broadhead the bow mm -hmm. the quiver mm -hmm. the arrow anything about yeah. it yeah. Mm -hmm. good uh yeah if there is enough one. yeah okay you're not done yet okay then continue oh i have I have the important uh, ones, not all of them. Don't show okay. your whole library. One of the most important ones is, of course, Legends in Archery. Of course. This one is also available in English by mm. Schiffer Publishing in Pennsylvania. Yeah. Mm. And every chapter is, is about one archer. Mm -hmm. It's a kind of short biography. Here's a chapter about Sasha Seymour. Mm -hmm. You see? Okay. And Yes, it's still available. Mm -hmm. You reach some matches you don't know. Mm -hmm. You reach, for example, made the quiver and the stuff mm -hmm. partly for the Robin Hood movie with Errol mm -hmm. Flynn. Okay. So they were kind of a uh, kind of community who worked together in these mm -hmm. days back then. Nice. Let me see if I have another interesting one. Here's one by Bob Swinehart. Mm -hmm. It's very expensive. It's Ooh, called okay. In Africa, mm -hmm. and you can't find it anymore. There are big mm. pictures inside. Okay. Uh, you know what? Mm. I have a lot more of these books. Mm. Maybe we make a second part about it. Yeah, we make a second part. Because I, okay. we are really now already in, I think, more than one hour. So we should maybe come to an end soon. Only one okay. question. If you could only recommend one book for a guy who wants to start archery, who is already in archery, which would be your, your choice? Only one. Hmm. That's a hard one. Of course. It's a hard, hard question. This is how, we, how they know me. Uh, okay. If I put all, if I put all these how-to books away, yeah. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. there are thousands, how to, you know, you yeah. have. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. uh, if you really get into the, like to get into the spirit of archery mm -hmm. and also a little about hunting, mm -hmm. it's, it's Saxton Pope's hunting with the bow and arrow. Mm -hmm. It's, mm -hmm. it's very romantic written. You, mm -hmm. you feel, you feel the heart of mm -hmm. archery in this mm -hmm. book. Okay. And it's an old one and it's an all-time classic, I would say. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nice. Mm -hmm. For me, from my side, it would be still Chinese archery from Stephen Selby because this is this wide overview of what China had to offer in regards of archery in all dynasties and whatever. He really dug very deep and yep. 
and he translated a lot of text and how tos and manuals and and parts of it that at, at, as example qigong you know this 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 is mental breathing yeah. was always mandatory for the archers at this time in china that they had to do this internal practice to gain this strength this internal strength and stuff so it's very interesting for for everyone who is interested in any kind of asiatic archery so this is would be for me it's your first overview you have your gao ying within as one version not the way of archery but at least as one way that's really interesting so this would be my my choice um i have to i have to apologize because i'm not that man into eastern archery <laughs> i'm a western archery guy so that's why i'm here on this side don't you worry i get you covered I see i see okay mm. and so i recommend that kind of books of and, and 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 so on i But, never read uh, almost anything of your books because i'm not so into hunting and that's why we have but we still should bow and arrow but it's interesting that you see from a different perspective which book would be recommended so that's why it's fine like it is don't worry you don't have to apologize that you can't that asiatic archery is not for you don't worry you all should bow and arrow but but i i admire it of course mm -hmm. because since i got in contact in korea and so with this yeah. all eastern archers with you know mm -hmm. uh murat Mm, and so on yeah of course he's such a funny Great. guy he's he's like yes, a, like yes, a bear yes. like like a, such a humongous big guy, guy but very handsome funny. big guy he's so funny and i always joked about him i said always to him oh he's very stylish gentleman like yeah, 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 oh no yeah. you are you are <laughs> with your jacket <laughs> yeah, yeah. and so <laughs> he's a nice guy yeah yeah mm -hmm. maybe we can get him too that would be interesting yeah Yeah, you yeah. met him, so you spoke to him. I only know him from Facebook and Instagram, so yeah, I will try to sure if even I will try him. to get him. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Good. So what what are your further plans for today? Yeah, you drive to your not, to uh, your beautiful the mess here uh, with all these books. <laughs> to your to your uh, girlfriend, your drive over. Not today. No. No. So I you just came her. from it, and I got my computer back finally. I will upload maybe another video. Because I am a little behind with my videos, but because of computer but, problems. But, but this is but what don't get too far from nature. You have to stay connected to nature. Don't worry. I'm always connected to nature because even this house is nature. Really? Of course. My I roots see. go very deep. Don't you worry. Let me see. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Down there is everything very deep. Don't you worry. <laughs> But I don't have a wide angle lens on my computer. That's why I can't show it. So I can't see your roots. Yeah. <laughs> a rooted guy. Yeah, of course. <laughs> okay. So another short question. Is there anything we have to answer uh, uh, according I, to the comments? or or? I simply don't know because I didn't read them because of my computer <laughs> And only and only on the phone screen you go gaga, you know when you're on 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 the telephone yeah, and you try yeah, to read yeah, yeah. and everything it's like, yeah. So I didn't read yeah. now. But the, the guys, if you have questions, simply write them now in the comments and yeah. Um, and today we don't talk a lot about politics no. and, oh, and, we and the confident. virus and so on. So we were we nice to guys people. today. We listen to people, but we don't we don't care but we listen <laughs> we, don't, we, <laughs> yeah. we don't we care but we don't always follow to every suggestion because when you see in the comments there were so many they said oh thank you that you were talking yeah. about different things or i'm not the only one thinking that there is maybe something a little yeah. a play with this covid Weird. or something <laughs> and others say please when you don't have any idea and you don't know and you're not a virologist you should shut up and it's simply everybody can have an opinion And uh, my opinions are usually based on either experience or I get logical think, thinking, thinking, critical thinking, which is not a very common thing anymore. And yeah. I get information from trustworthy sources. So if as we were talking today, somebody mentioned then in as a source, the, the, the ZDF, the, the, the German official broadcast television yeah. channel. Folks, this is a source. And he thinks this is a source for proper, real information. Then thank you. Yeah, and 
I want to mention one thing more here. Because on the other hand, a lot of these cons so-called conspiracy theorists or conspiracy mm. guys making the other mistake and believing every of the conspiracies, that's also wrong. You have to, to choose your, your logical thinking, the, your, your level of critically. Yes, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Because I also don't think that the rich ones are eating babies. <laughs> I don't mm -hmm. believe it. Mm -hmm. but, because it's it's why? But why don't you believe it. Be, because because I don't believe it. But I I agree that there are a lot of pedophiles. Maybe. Mm -hmm. That okay. you know. But where is so, the limit? You know, once you have, as I said, it's always about the kick. And once you are a pedophile and you have always younger, 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 younger. And I don't know, I mean, how, how worse it can get in your brain for your needs to be satisfied again. So yeah. that's why I don't know. I think there is no end in this. I mean, we had cannibalism and stuff like this. this. I don't know. I, I don't believe because it's a very diff different thing. If, and, you know, I don't, I don't get into trouble. But, you know, this pedophile thing mm -hmm. is, of course, a cultural thing because... Mm -hmm. In Africa, there are 13 year old or 12 year old girls are married. Mm -hmm. And we have another law and we have another culture. And mm -hmm. so, so this is a different theme by itself, yeah. of yeah. course. Don't talk about children, that's another thing. Mm. Uh, but these are real perverts in that case, of course. Mm -hmm. Of course. So, mm -hmm. yes, but. Uh, not pedophile, not that. Mm -hmm. You don't. You don't should. You don't should believe everything of the mm. conspiracy theories, but also stay critical, of like course. you stay with the ZDF. Stay critically also with the conspiracies. That's what I wanted to say. Okay, fine. Mm. Okay, so I, I'm I happy if find I... funny that some of the recent conspiracy theories turn out to be now the truth and the real yeah. reality yeah. and yeah. people still yeah. Yeah. don't yeah. see it yeah this, this viral cool. thing uh put a lot of uh, how you call it water on the wheels of the conspiracy theories because they were because, right yeah yeah in yeah. this regards they yeah. were right and some yeah. people tell others since more than 10 years that this is going to happen and yeah. um, conspiracy theories and now, you know, because even... now they, they reach a point or where they suffer and they suffer a lot. Now they, they open up and, okay, maybe there is something wrong. But when you show yeah. them before, look here. No, no, no. no. And, and, you know, it's funny because even uh, five years ago, when I heard about this guy believing in chemtrails, mm -hmm. you know, airplanes flying and putting yeah. something into the yeah. air and so on. Mm -hmm. I said, that's crazy. Mm -hmm. But now there's a new plan, and it's official, it's no conspiracy, mm -hmm. by Bill Gates mm -hmm. to bring out some particles into the atmosphere mm -hmm. to reflect the sunlight yep. to prevent of uh, climate change. Mm -hmm. Because of the corona crisis, there mm. are less uh, particles in the air who reflect the sunlight out. Mm. And so the earth, get, earth gets war mm. quicker, warm. Crazy. So now just... even this conspiracy theory mm. gets right, gets true. Mm. It's really yeah. crazy. And really many crazy. more come, don't you worry. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Yeah, it's a crazy world we live in. We have to deal with it. Yeah. Okay. 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 Done for with today. Was a great talk. Yes, and I had a lot of books. I didn't expect that. Mind, I'm not uh, that big of a book reader, but you know, that, that was only the half of them. <laughs> one half of my books. A better half. <laughs> ah, let's make another one. Uh, we make another one to a later time. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because if we have them through, I can put them away. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Yeah. Great. Then so you folks, next time, same place, folks, same station as usual. Subscribe to our channel, of course. Push the bell button, mm -hmm. like our video, 
write in the comments write us lovely comments as yes. as we Please. like it we need some hugs <laughs> we don't read them <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it, only this recently I didn't read because of my last Wednesday my computer died or Thursday I don't know Wednesday I think and then it was simply okay. turned black and no idea what happened now it's at least working again and only working on the phone it's not going to work with me so uh, I, agree. I totally agree I tried totally to agree. upload the video on my phone I started Saturday at eight o'clock and this afternoon I was finally done with the video Three and a half days, which normally takes oh, five. Oh, that's crazy! Hours. That's crazy! It's, it's not going to. It's not going to happen that's again. That's crazy. Yep. Okay. So, things. goodbye. Shoot straight. Mm -hmm. Shoot straight. Take care. Stay calm. The Stay next calm. battle will be one of. Yeah, we talk about this another time. Stay connected with nature. Of course. You you turn on the the, the tap water. Water runs out. It's from nature. So. Yeah. Yeah. We can't get disconnected connected from exactly. nature. We are part of nature. And when we die, we are even better connected to nature because we feed the worms. Exactly. <laughs> and they they grow something again and then we are we are yeah, appearing again and again. Yeah. yeah. In different yeah. shapes. And they forms. grow another worm like we are. Yes. yes. <laughs> exactly. And we warm around. Mm -hmm. Warming okay. around. <laughs> was fun Goodbye, to Amin. You. Was very interesting. Have a nice one. See you all next time. Ciao, see ciao. you. Bye -bye. See you. Goodbye. Goodbye.